I'm going to try a little bit of Swahili first. So Jambo Habari. Mimi na Farahi, Sana, Kuhapa, Pajama, Na, Nadugu, Zitu, Africa. So it's really, really great to be here uh, with all of you amazing people, amazing project managers, program managers, portfolio managers, operational managers. Fantastic. And actually, you all make it pretty easy for me to get up every morning and, and to represent you because you do such an amazing job, not just here in Africa, but across the globe. I mean, for many of you will not know, I've been in the organization six months and I've been traveling around um, the, the world uh, quite a lot. And there's one consistent message that I see everywhere I go from, whether it's in Singapore, China, Japan, or it's in Latin America, and here in Africa as well, is the sheer passion for project management is, it's, it's beyond religion, it's incredible. And, and the reason why that is, is because, you know, this is the, a community of people that work, whether it's in academia, whether it's in government, across industry, you know, it's a core capability in every single organization on this planet. And those organizations would not exist if it wasn't for people like you. So, you know, it's very, very commendable and, it, and I feel really privileged to be, you know, representing you all on the global uh, footprint. And I really am very happy to be here as well because ultimately the ideas and plans that organizations and governments have need to be converted to reality and that's what you all do. So. It's very, very commendable. Um, oh, multitasking here, sorry. So um, I understand that, uh, uh, that the chapters are growing very, very significantly in, uh, in Africa. And may that continue. And this morning we were having conversations about how do we open up more chapters. And a lot of you have been coming up to see me. And I'm here for two days to uh, to talk to you all because there are certain areas which don't have chapters that would look to have chapters and I think that we should we should continue to expand our, our uh, footprint of chapters in the in the continent because that is where all um, the work really gets done you know the representation in the communities and the local communities happens from the chapters and I think that that is also the place where most of the best shared practice is sitting so one thing I would like to ad advocate very much so is that we build and continue to build our chapters. But I want to start a little bit about why I feel that, that Africa is important for me. For, for those of you who don't know, I was actually born in uh, Nairobi. Um, yeah, so I'm Kenyan, I'm, I'm, uh, which is nice. Uh, I did all my education in the UK. Um, and then I moved to Singapore. And then I met my wife, and she's from Tanzania. <laughs> This is really good. And her parents are also from Tanzania. Actually, they just moved around the corner. So it's nice to be back home. Um, but my kids were born in the UK. Um, and we're pretty global because my son was born in, one son was born in France, uh, but he speaks Chinese. My other son was born in England. He speaks French. I speak a little bit of Dutch. I lived in Singapore. Um, I uh, also lived in the UK, also lived in France. Uh, I'm now back in the UK. Oh, I also spent a little bit of time, obviously, 11, 12 years living in Kenya. So, lovely place. And I was thinking, you know, there is a perception about, uh, about Africa being large. But if you look at the maps, it doesn't really reflect how large it really is. So, I, I found this on Google. I'm not sure if you can read it at the back. So, I'm just going to uh, tell you a little, few little facts. So, massive continent. And you could actually fit all of China, all of the USA, all of India, and most of Europe into Africa, and you'd still have space for dessert and a cup of coffee. <laughs> you know, it's a pretty big place. So, and if you think about projects, projects are not a new thing. You know, think about Egypt. Egypt and the pyramids, which are very famous in Egypt, 5,000 years old. Someone had to project manage those. PMI was not around 5,000 years ago, but somebody knew what they were doing back then. Sudan, this is a, lone, a fact I didn't know, Sudan has 220 pyramids, and Egypt only has 80. So 
pyramids and the building of those pyramids, which today people still can't work out how it was done. But one thing that was for sure, project managers were involved. And then if you then roll forward to where we are today and look what's happening in the Congo, look what's happening in uh, DRC with, the, with the, a massive dam that's being built and plans for new, new dams. And so construction is a big part of, of Africa. Kenya and its smart city program that it's got there. So smart cities is a big agenda item for Africa. And then you've got M-Pesa and technology, also a big part of the agenda for Africa. So there's a lot going on across Africa, historically, from a scale perspective, and also from different technologies where projects are going to get involved. So we play a little game. Let me press another button. I'm going to ask you a few questions. So does anyone know what that top number is up there? Oh, it's warm here. Anyone know? Anyone like to hazard a guess? What that top number is? 8,847? No? Global members in Africa. PMI members in Africa. That number has grown to that, to that number in the last four years by 60%. So we are scaling rapidly. Do you know what the bottom number is? The bottom number is the number of certifications. And they have grown by 44% in the last three years. So the certifications are also important and scaling exponentially. Try this number. This one, you might have a clue. 2.5 billion. Thanks. Two point five billion is the population of Africa in twenty years' time. So it's one point two, Ike, one point three? Right now. Twenty years it'll be two point five. And the quarter represents the fact that in twenty twenty, a quarter of the population will be in Africa. That is huge. That is huge, huge growth. And it means a big change. A change in the infrastructure, a change in the countries, a change in the cities within those countries, a change in the technology, a change in the construction, a massive change. And we at PMI also need to change. Because today, to be a project manager is not just about delivering projects on time and on budget. There's all sorts of transformation that's going on. There's new technologies that are coming out. AI is transforming, automating work that project managers used to do, and in fact, others used to do too. So there's new technologies, new methodologies, new uh, disruptions that are taking place. So we as project managers who are expected to deliver projects are now being asked to do a hell of a lot more. We're actually being asked to be change agents. We're asked to be value creators. We're asked to actually become leaders in the fullest sense. So it's a lot more. Our own scope is increasing in what we're trying to do. So it's not enough just to master technical skills. It's experience, expertise, the soft skills, the way people work is changing. Jobs themselves in the past used to be for life. It's changing now. So jobs now themselves are becoming projects. And we have to embrace those changes as PMI. And we have to make sure that we have the capabilities and the accreditations and the certifications and the point of view to help you all become successful in the future, especially when you have this type of growth. If we can do that, we should be able to. Sorry, I just jumped ahead. We should be able to make a big difference to all the people across the whole continent and also across the globe. I've got two things I want to talk about specifically today. One is that it's actually our 50th anniversary, and this evening you'll probably celebrate, most of you are going to be here this evening quite vividly about our 50th anniversary. If you know, if you've seen any of the videos of what happened in, in uh, Ireland and what happened in Brazil, I've got a reputation for being like the dancing CEO, so maybe you might see some of that this evening. But we do have our 50th anniversary. And I'm super proud because if you think about where PMI has, has achieved over 50 years, it's phenomenal. It's beyond phenomenal. 300 chapters, thank you very much. It's very hot with these lights. 307, actually, chapters around the world. 
14,000 volunteers around the world, you know, 1.5 million certifications, 600,000 members. It's phenomenal. So I'm going to show you a small video uh, that will bring us all the way up to speed. And I also then want to talk about our global celebration of service. So let's just kick off with the video first. I'm Jim Snyder. I'm one of the founders of PMI. We're celebrating 50 years now. It's been a long, long time, but it's been a truly wonderful experience. PMI didn't start with a meeting. Uh, lots of people think it did. It grew out of a work relationship uh, between basically three groups of people. The first group was the uh, people at uh, Brown and Root, Eric Jeanette, the group of people that were working with McDonnell Douglas, with Ned Engman, and the third group, the people that were working with me at Smith Klein. And we were all using project management tools and techniques and we found that we needed to share some information about those. And PMI literally grew out of the need to exchange information. It was really Ned Engman and a dark and stormy night in Philadelphia when we decided that it was time to stop talking about it and do something. We convened the first meeting of the board of directors uh, on a Saturday morning at Georgia Tech. And I think it all of a sudden dawned on the five or six or seven people that were in that room at that time that We've just started an organization, and uh, it sort of fell to me to, to be the administrative leader of the group. That position grew as the years grew, and as the number of members grew, and after the first 12 to 15 years, it got to the point that I just couldn't do it any longer, and PMI moved to hire its first professional executive director. I look back over the last 50 years, it's just exciting to me to be a part of an organization that's helped to bring people to the point that they can manage these kinds of large-scale projects as well as the many small business projects that we undertake every day as project managers. Back in the early 70s, members of the organization quickly realized that PMI was giving them an awful lot and that it was important to begin to give some of what they had received back to others. And one of the early areas that we started to do that was in, in giving back through educational programs and it's developed into the, the large programs of the Educational Foundation today. Of the fondest memories, it's certainly the people. Uh, the project management is all great and good, but my memories of PMI and the things that I cherish the most about the organization are the friendships I've made. I think it's important that if you're starting your career and you're interested in PMI, that you don't just pay your dues. You'll get the most out of PMI when you begin to 
specific and actively involved in the project work of either the local chapter or the international organization or organizations within your own countries or within your own chapters. I think the next 50 years excites me about PMI and the profession. PMI will change as the world changes. PMI will change as business changes. And PMI will continue to support a growing profession of project management worldwide. It's pretty inspiring. So the, the second area that I really want to touch on is the work that we're doing around social good. So many of you will know that uh, at the beginning of the year we um, set a target to um, try and achieve um, 50,000 uh, hours of support for the United Nations um, 17 social good initiatives that they're running. I want to just show you some results of that. Let me roll another video. Parada así en un ventanocito de, de la tiendita que teníamos. El mundo se está moviendo así. Y para adelante, y para acá, y para acá. Toda la gente corriendo. Pero la casa quedó hundida, la casa quedó destruida. Todas mis cositas que tenía. Mi esposo ya más se asustó y lo voy el día domingo, y el martes ya lo llevaron muerto a la casa. Cuando hubo el terremoto, pues, el sentimiento de solidaridad aparece. Va a llegar el momento en donde la vida te llama y eres voluntario. Este es mi momento. Aunque yo haya tenido duras pruebas, pero nunca me he dado por vencida. Buenas tardes, Mariana. Bueno, niño. Te fijas mucho en las herramientas de Project Management. Te das cuenta de que Project Management es más allá que solamente herramientas. El apoyo, el soporte, el estar con las personas. Lo que yo hago siempre, la gente se admira en que como yo hago. Yo todo el tiempo he sido mi vida enferma. Las herramientas que hemos venido ayudando son, por sí mismas son herramientas. Es como tener un martillo, es como tener una sierra. Si no la sabes usar, no sirve para mucho. ¿Cómo podemos trabajar? ¿Cómo puedo yo hacer? Este dar y recibir, este dar y recibir, tú te nutres de esa energía. Mariana nos demuestra con su ejemplo. Yo he sido todo el tiempo, la verdad. ¿Y sabe por qué? Porque esa alegría a mí me... Hay una responsabilidad en el devolver lo que la vida en algún momento nos ha dado. Mi nombre es Santiago Cartagena y soy Project Manager. Mis nombres son Mariana Clorinda Caicedo Guerrero. Yo manejo una tiendita. Es mi vida, que ha sido toda una vida, que yo no alcanzo a ver. Nunca me he dado por vencida. Another inspirational activity that we're doing. It's phenomenal. And so what we did was we, uh, we uh, committed to 50,000 man hours of you know, work against these 17 uh, initiatives. And within three months, we'd achieved that. It was supposed to be the annual target, and we did it in three months, which I think is fantastic. So we, in Dublin, we doubled it and thought, let's go for 100,000. And I'm pleased to say that for our October, when we start to celebrate our 50th, on the actual day, we have already achieved 100,000 and it would be great to say that we're going to hit 150 three times. Not there yet, but 100 we've done, which is fantastic. And actually, you know, a lot of that contribution has come from here. It's come from, uh, it's from, come from Africa. Uh, the Nigeria chapter have uh, done some great work with uh, an initiative, I think it's called Scopedia. Is, is that to do with scope? I don't know, project manager, but it's called Sc Scopedia. And I know other chapters as well, uh, Cameroon, and uh, are all doing their bit. And in fact, yesterday, we all did a little bit as well. So fantastic. May it continue. Uh, let's see if we can hit the, the 150,000 hours. That would be fantastic. OK. I just want to touch on one individual. Uh, this is, for those of you who know, uh, Bob Collymore. Um, he was the CEO of Safaricom. I used to work for uh, Vodafone. Um, Safaricom is part of that. And um, this guy is a, a sadly passed away a few months ago and a good buddy of mine. And 
he was the CEO of Safaricom, and he used to say, and I, I remember some of the words, and I couldn't uh, leave the stage without talking about this guy because he's an extremely inspirational individual. It's a big loss to the telecommunications industry. It's a big loss to leadership. And he used to say, you know, um, if you don't get implementation right, all you're doing is creating documents. You're just not moving anywhere. And he said that for everything, whether you were working in finance department or HR department, delivery, whether you were installing base stations uh, in the telco world or implementing 3G, 4G. And he had a big part to play in M-Pesa, so he had a huge impact on the telecommunications world and also on people who struggle to, uh, to have money transactions taking place around the world. So I couldn't leave the, this stage today without mentioning him because I think that, you know, we said earlier on that uh, people always say, you know, talk about the bad things that are going on in Africa. This was a fantastic thing that happened in Africa. Bob Collymore was an amazing guy, and he has done a lot for the continent, and the impact that he's had is going to impact the entire world. So one up for this guy. Okay. So I'm going to finish off now, and um, before I finish off, I've just got one small announcement to make. Um, so in my travels of traveling around uh, and getting myself up to speed with PMI um, over the last six months, there's something I, I did notice, and that is as I go to different parts of the world, the passion is there, the, the, the commitment is there, and when people are asking for help from our head office, you know, they shout very loudly about what they want. But by the time that voice kind of reaches Philadelphia, it's become a whisper. And there's lots of these whispers. And so it doesn't feel as important at global head office as it does out in the regions. And that's a problem. Um, and it's, uh, it's a problem I identify straight away. So an example, a chap sitting in Singapore, uh, in, the, in the, the Singapore chapter, wants something done, needs some support, He'll make a lot of noise about it. By the time it gets to me, it's a whisper. So it doesn't feel as important. And likewise, when the head office says, hey, I think we should do X, Y, and Z, by the time that voice gets to Singapore, it's like, hey, we have to do X, Y, and Z. It's like an order. So that's the wrong way around. So one of the things that we've done in the last six months is we've started to regionalize the organization because the voice of PMI is not in Philadelphia, it's in the regions. And the, the closer you get to your end customer, the closer you get to the, you know, the project manager, the more you can have an impact and, and be relevant to them in their career. So we're changing the organization structure. Um, more decisions will be made in the regions and Africa is gonna be a region. So then we need a leader for Africa. And um, you know we're going to have leadership in, in, in different parts of the world now that represent those parts of the world. So Latin America will have a lead for Latin America who's responsible solely for developing Latin America. Likewise, there will be Bob Chen we have in China and in India. And for Africa, I'm really pleased to announce that we have with us today the new lead for PMI for Africa, the CEO, if you like, of the African region. And she's sitting right over here. And her name is Otima. So Otima, would you like to stand up and... You can come up. Yeah, come on up. Help me out here. <laughs> so, so Otima, um, do we have another microphone? Maybe we can... Uh... So just why don't, you, why don't you just introduce yourself a little bit and what you've been doing. I'll give you this microphone. Okay. Sure. So, hello. I'm Atima Urenchi. I'm from Ghana. So, to the Ghana people. <laughs> and um, I'm thrilled to be here uh, and to be part of the PMI network and family. And so, but in my background uh, in telecoms and uh, IT with IBM and Microsoft and Vodafone, and now I'm with PMI. So I'm very excited about the role, and I know some of you I've met, and I look forward to meeting a number of you throughout the next two days. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. So, um, so this is all, you know, this was not planned, any of this, right, what's going on here. So I just want to do a couple of things. Um, first of all, Ottoman will be you know, on my leadership team. 
and we meet on a weekly basis, and, and her focus will be on Africa and building Africa out. Because if, when you look at the scaling of the, of, uh, the continent, doubling in size, you know, there's going to be a huge amount of opportunities to grow. So, I mean, where, where are you going to sort of focus? What's, what's going to be your like, first focal area? Hmm. I'm putting you on the spot. So. Yes. <laughs> I, think, um, I think there's huge opportunity uh, to get um, African organizations uh, to be uh, engaged with PMI as well as the youth, as you pointed out, I think that that's huge. And also just to increase the, our, the awareness of PMI. So to really increase our presence in Africa and be relevant um, as the continent grows exponentially. So I think one of the, one of the uh, hints I will mm -hmm. give you is that if you, um, you told me that you're gonna be going to Nigeria. Yes. So, <laughs> not wanting to throw you under the bus or anything like that, but if you say that you're going to go to Nigeria, you do realize you do have to go to the other 14 chapters. You can't kind of like, you know, the Ghana guys, will, you'll get an email in your inbox. <laughs> you know, I went, I went to Singapore and within five minutes I had Malaysia saying, well, how come you went to Singapore and you didn't come to see me? Exactly. And I went to Singapore on holiday. I didn't go to see the chapter. So you've, you've committed to Nigeria, so you are going to have to go and see all the other 14 as well at some point. All right. But anyway, um, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll, um, I'll, um, we'll finish off there. And what I'd like to do, there's another uh, distinguished guest here uh, with us today, and that's uh, Teja Sura. He's, he's, on our, he's on the board of PMI, and I think he's going to take the rest of the presentation. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>